Hello, good day and welcome back. So today we're gonna start by looking at some standard package and the specific standard package we're gonna look at in chapter 10 is gonna be the IO package. Now within the IO package, there are many um, functions and types defined. The one we're gonna start with is the IO writer. And this is just part one of the IO writer. We have several parts in the IO writer, several parts in the IO reader and some other ones. So what are we gonna do? We're going to look at the IO Writer interface, read its definition, and then we're going to try a simple implementation of it. We're going to try and keep this section, section nice, light, and small, and so there's not too much for you to digest. But everything you're going to see is pretty much stuff that we've done before. So let's get rid of this. Let's save that. And um, let's go over here. And so place to start seeing documentation and packages is at the Golang website, Packages. And we're going to scroll along to I.O. And there's the I.O. package there. And you can see this package provides basic interface to I.O. primitives. But what we're looking for is I.O. is the writer. And so you can see writer is type writer interface. So it's an interface and it has this one method called write, which takes a parameter P that's a slice of bytes and returns two variables, uh, two values. Um, the number of bytes you've written and an error. And so the whole def description here of how this interface is supposed to behave or anyone who implements this interface, what they should do, it's here. And it just basically tell you that oh, if you can write the amount um, specifying bytes, then you should return how many you were able to write and an error describing why you couldn't write more. So the user of your interface would know um, you know, of this method rather, would know why all the data wasn't written. So what we're going to do, as we said, is simply going to implement this interface as a write counter, which means we're going to implement it on a type that we're going to create. And basically, all we're going to do is count how many times we call this interface. Very simple and straightforward. So let's do that. And so we're going to open up our code editor and we're going to start looking at the code. And so we're going to, of course, start with main.go and then package, of course, main and func main and fmt that print line. Are we doing a write counter? Right. And like I said, we're doing a simple type that simply comes the number of times we write to the interface. So we should say type, um, let's just call this counter. And we're going to say it's of type int because all we need to do is keep track of an int. And how we imagine using this is that we imagine that you're going to be able to say var counter counter c or something like that is equals to counter. And um, maybe uh, I don't need to initialize it that way, but I'm going to just say counter. And I know that though, since the underlying type here is int, this is going to be properly initialized. And I could prove that by saying fmt print f. And then I can say what's the value of count, for example, percent v, and actually I should rewind. And I really shouldn't be doing this because this is sort of just wasting our time. And you know that though this is going to work already. All right. Okay. So again, um, the way I imagine using this is I'm going to say see that right, and I'm going to pass some bytes to it. And it doesn't really matter. Um, let's call it I have some data, data zero, and then maybe I'm going to have, you know, data one, for example, and data two, and it doesn't really matter how many, if I have different data or I'm calling it uh, with the same data, because we're ignoring that. All we want to do is count how many times um, this has been written to. And so if I do FMT, that print lang, print F, and then I say, you know, write counter, percent V new line and then C I should see that oh I've written to this thing six times and so now we just need to implement that right method and we know that is simply saying that the right interface looks like the right it takes a slice of bytes P and it doesn't really matter what you call it but a slice of bytes and it returns some integer n that tells you how many bytes have been actually been written and the error from the error type, um, the error type, okay, which is provided by the Go language, and 
no, we just have to implement that. But in order to implement it, we need to say, right now, this is just a function. But if we put a receiver on there, we could say, so this is being implemented by a type. And so we're going to say counter. Now, we know that we want to modify the underlying count, so we're not going to pass a copy of it because we know from experience this wouldn't work, so we pass a pointer to this type. Otherwise, we would be able to affect it each time we call it. Now, we went through that already, so I'm not going to waste time because I'm trying to make this video as impactful without repeating too much that you already know. All right, so what do we do? Well, we only keep in track of how many times we um, get called, so... Um, what we want to be able to do is say star C, which is to dereference the C, is equals to um, star, well, it's going to be equals to a new counter, right? Which we're going to create by adding, so let's say we have the current count plus one, we're going to increment, right? But this is a pointer. So if we dereference this, we're going to have a type of counter but we know that we can add one to that because um, there's a type counter which is different from an int so we really need to cast this to an int so we're going to dereference cast it to an int and then add one to it so what we did was dereference the pointer that give us the counter on the line counter object then we cast that to an int which give us the integer that's stored inside and then now we add one to that and then that integer value is what we create a new counter and assign it back to you here. Okay. So, well, okay, we assign it, we can assign it there because we don't want to change the actual pointer. We just want to change the value that's being pointed to. Okay. And so now we're going to see if this works. So let's just, oh, of course we need to return. So um, let's do a, um, a return here of this is so we gonna do return length P because we're always successful and nil because this could never fail no matter how many times you call this since we just counted how many times you call it this is never gonna fail so now let's see this should um, have been updated oh we need data so so let's do var d0 is a slice of byte Okay, and we can create three of these, one and two. And it doesn't really matter that they're empty because we're not we don't we're not using that. And so now let's run the code. And so we see six, which is exactly what we expect. And if I call it one more time, we see that um, here again um, it counts the number of things that we think. So if we pass a slice of byte and then you initialize it to you know, just an empty or whatever it doesn't matter it's still this is going to work right seven okay so that example is finished okay that's it thanks for your time I appreciate it thanks for spreading the word if you haven't subscribed please do if you've already subscribed please spread the word and see you soon take care have a great day